<coughs> pitfalls when reading an OCT report. OCT can measure structural changes in the disc and the retinal fiber layer around it. Also, can measure changes of the ganglion cells within the macula. It is an indispensable tool for both diagnosis of glaucoma and showing its progression. Multiple studies have shown that the different parameters of OCT are reproducible. The problem comes when we take it for granted that every red or yellow area is an abnormality, because if we do so, we may end by treating red disease instead of treating a real glaucoma. So the source of error can be due to an OCT machine mistakenly identifies an area or an eye as being abnormal, or it may come that when we ignore that the sensitivity and the specificity of the and of the OCT machine is not that perfect. We have different types of machines coming from different companies, and also we have different generations of the OCT, the time domain and the spectral domain. I'm going to restrict most of my talk to the spectral domain of the OCT of the Zeiss company, that is the Ceres OCT. This is the shape of the printout we receive. We start by looking at this area and we check the signal strength. It should be six or higher. Signal strength reduction is associated with decrease in the retinal fiber layer thickness. Several studies showed that scans with greater signal strength are associated with higher retinal fiber layer thickness measurement. Dry eye and cataract also may diminish scan quality. This will decrease the retinal fiber layer thickness, and this can result in false diagnosis or false progression. Different machines have different signal strengths. Then this area will show the thickness of the nerve fiber layer. This is an area 6 by 6 millimeters around the disc. And here in this part, this is the deviation of the thickness from the normal. If it is within the same range, it is gray. But if it is outside the range, it will be yellow or red. Yellow means that this value occurs in 5% of the normal, and the red means that the value occurs in 1% of the normal. What the machine do is that it checks the end of the Bruch's membrane, and this will give the limits of the disk. Now we can know where the opening of the Bruch's membrane then the machine locate the center of this area, then start to draw a circle with a diameter 3.4 starting from the center. Now this ring of 3.4, the thickness all around is measured and it is drawn up here both for the right eye and the left eye. If the thickness is within the normal range, it will fall in the green zone, but if it is abnormal, it may fall in the yellow or the red zone. And this is the appearance of the different sectors or the clock hour sectors. Then we need to have a look in this part to check that the segmentation is correct and the machine correctly identified the retinal fiber layer. Here we can see the different parameters of the retinal fiber layer and the different parameters of the disc. Then this area will show us a section in the nerve both vertical and horizontal. This is important that we check for it and to see that the actually the machine could identify the end of the retinal fiber layer, I'm sorry, the end of the retinal pigment epithelium and the Bruch's membrane correctly. Now we come to the different errors. 
first type of error that when OCT mistakenly identifies an area or an eye as being abnormal. Here we get interruption of a blood vessel. This is due to a saccadic movement of the eye. Once we have this, then this ring is not in a continuous ring. It's in one area correct and in another area it is in another location. So this is the first mistake. Here you can see the vessel interrupted. So again, we don't trust this area to be completely correct all around. This is another effect, which is blinking artifact. When the machine start to acquire the image, the lids were closed in this area, and abnormally you see this red area. Again, opacities in the vitreous can result in localized thinning of the nerve fiber layer beneath it, because the signal does not pass. This is a very nice article where the authors did an OCT, then repeat it again within minutes. In this example here, we have an opacity floater in the vitreous, but the second time it came inside or over the circle of 3.4. This result in an artifact thickness here compared to the original correct one. Again, this opacity appears on the second and third images. Then the size of the disk changes. And also, as the size of the disk changes, the center changes. So the ring differs. So we have another artifact just simply because of some other opacity. Here we have an opacity in the vitreous. With the repetition of imaging, it became over the ring. Then we get this artifact low signal compared to the one above. Here an opacity appears in the area. And instead of measuring the disk size, of that area, it included this as well. So we have a larger than normal disk. This is the limit of the disk when the opacity were out, and this is the limit of the disk when the opacity was included. And then we have a different sizes of the disk and a different measurement of the rim area. Also, the ring became located in another location, and we get a difference in the sector's hour between the two readings. Now, examples of abnormality in the segmentation. Here, the machine could detect the nerve fiber layer correctly, but in this part, there was mistakenly taken in a lower abnormal level. Again, the machine did not follow here. The segmentation is incorrect, and here also the segmentation is incorrect. This is examples of opacities in the media, resulting in marked, complete loss of thickness in, in certain areas. Now I want you to have a look on disk parameters. You have to check that the Bruch's membrane ending is correctly located. The machine, after locating the Bruch's membrane ending, finds the short distance between the Bruch's membrane endings and the internal limiting membrane to calculate the amount of nerve tissue here. I want to show you this example of the same patient that presented to me with six OCT reports done over two years. All were done with the same operator on the same machine and all had 
a good signal quality. I'm going to show the result of one side of the disk. I want you to see the contour of the disk over the different examination. And once the size of the disk and the shape of the disk varies, then the center also varies. And this will result in variation of the 3.4 ring of the North Harbor layer thickness. Again, the same patient, I want to, to keep an eye on the disc area. This should be fixed all the time. Second example, third, fourth visit, fifth visit, sixth visit. So the same patient, the disc size changes 2.25, 3.17, 3, 3.13, 3.22, again 3.30, 2.30. This is all artifact. Another example here, in the Topcom machine, after deciding where is the proximal brain ends, then a reference plane higher by 120 micron, it's the location of the neural tissue. In this example, the machine calculated the end of the Bruch's membrane at this area. This is abnormal. Again, here abnormal. So all the measurements are abnormal. Instead of measuring it here, it put it to this location. Now we come to the second type. If we take it for granted, the sensitivity and specificity are perfect. Not every red is an abnormal, and also sometimes you may have a normal area flagged as red. Keep in mind if we say this is abnormal area, it still may be normal in 1% of the population, and for the yellow, we say it abnormal, but this can be normal in 5% of the normal. The problem is that we have for a comparison, a normative data, but this normative data does not include when was applied the age of the patient, the state of refraction, the axial length of the eye, and the disc size. All these parameters can affect the normative data. We don't have data below the age of 18 years. And as the patient gets older, the retinal fiber layer normally gets thinner. Now, the refractive error. There is no data for errors higher than minus 12 or higher than plus 18. Outside this range, there is no normative data. Moderate myopia can result in thinning of the peripapillary retinal fiber layer, especially at the superior and inferior poles. Again, long axial lenses are associated with red or yellow color codes in a normal eyes. Axial lens should be considered during retinal fiber layer thickness profile analysis. Explanation is that when the eye gets longer, there is a tension on the retinal fiber layer and it's going to get thinner. Again, another explanation is the magnification effect. If this is the normal eye, average eye, emetropic eye, if you have a large eye, then it's a longer anteposterior axis, then the same ring will be spread on a larger area than the 3.4, this will be more away from the disc than the, we abnormally will consider this should be a thinner retina. A third, magnetic, a third explanation is very interesting. It was due to the pure change of the state of refraction. And this study published in 2011 15 cycloplegic eyes of 15 participants 
were photographed, contact lenses were applied with different diopters, and then pictures were taken. So the same patient were photographed with different powers between minus 6 and plus 18. And it was, it was found that the retinal fiber layer thickness was underestimated with increasing negative power of the contact lenses and was overestimated with increasing positive power of the contact lenses. So here in this study, there is no change in the axial lens or there is no magnification, but the mere introduction of error of refraction changes the retinal fiber layer thickness. Again, studies show that the disc size affects the retinal fiber layer thickness. A second point, when we check the result of the patient, we say that normally we have the double hump appearance, that the thickness is high superiorly and inferiorly, and the patient should follow, data should follow the normal double hump. And again, we compare both eyes and they should be similar. And lastly, we check that isn't rule is followed at inferior thinning or superior thinning is not a case. But we, every test has its sensitivity and specificity. In this study that was done on 125 glucose eyes and 96 normal eyes, isn't rule was sensitive to include 80% of the glaucomatous eyes as being glaucoma, but was mistakenly including 32% of the non glaucomatous eyes. Again, don't consider every red is abnormal, it can be normal. And don't consider every yellow is abnormal, it can be normal in 1% or 5% of the population. In this study, over about 150 healthy eyes, there was a false positive changes in around one quadrant, one quarter of the patients. In this example, the color picture, the red free and the field was normal, but with the OCT, there was abnormality. If we go to the ganglion cells in the macula, we have different machines measuring different things. In the series, the measurement will include the ganglion cells and the inner plexiform layer, excluding the nerve layer. In the opto view, the three layers are included. So don't compare different machines. Again, the sectors are checked if they are like the normal range or outside the normal data. The ganglion cell complex maps have a very good diagnostic ability, reaching sensitivity up to 99%, but with less than 80% specificity. In this study, done on 131 glucomic size, and in 132 normal eyes, a real positive diagnosis was included here in around 80% of the cases. 80% if we depend on this diagram, 88% if we depend on this diagram, and around 80% if we depend on this diagram. But the problem is we can have a false positive in 20% if we depend on this diagram, and a falsy at 30% if we depend here of the normal, and 15% of the normal show this type of error. Again, the normals with an error with up to minus 4 diopters, 35% of the people show such changes, and with error up to minus four diopters, 
50% of the people show this type of error. And again, with the minus, up to minus five diopters, 53% of the persons show such an error. So clinicians should understand the limitation of the imaging technology and to apply that knowledge to the interpretation of testing results to avoid false positive diagnosis and false negative progression. This is important to avoid over-treating the patient. Thank you.